What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So if you're new around here, my name is Dale and I like to make videos based off fitness and health. So if you are into that sort of thing, please consider subscribing below. So a couple weeks ago, I made a video on tips to use when going out to eat at a restaurant. And so today I wanted to double down on that and even explain it further. So what we're gonna be talking about today is five foods to avoid when you're at a restaurant, but not when you're at home. Out of these five foods, there are four of them that I eat all the time at home, and I promise you, you can modify them to be much lower calorie than the restaurant versions without much trouble, and you're not going to sacrifice taste really at all. And if the taste is sacrificed, it's gonna be negligible, all right? You're gonna save hundreds of calories to make it 5% less tasty. Come on, it's well worth it. So without further ado, let's just get right into the list. So number one is going to be burgers. So hamburgers, cheeseburgers, uh, vegan burgers, all of those burgers at a restaurant are going to be way higher calorie than they are at home. If you look at a restaurant menu, you will notice that burgers oftentimes are over a thousand calories according to the menu. Like I said in the other video, uh, restaurant menus are not exactly accurate. They're more of guesses, but I would argue that a thousand calories for a burger is probably on the low side at a restaurant, especially if you're getting french fries and a drink with it. So a common theme on this list is that these foods oftentimes have a lot of variables that you are going to be able to manipulate when making them at home that you can't really manipulate at a restaurant. So in the case of burgers, there are going to be the bun. There's the percent fat in the meat. There's going to be the cheese, the toppings. All of those things are going to be able to be manipulated at home to make them lower calorie. For example, if you switched from a brioche bun that they're probably going to have at a restaurant to a regular store brand bun, you could save yourself hundreds of calories, just the bun, even if you kept everything else the same. If you switched the way that you cook the meat, not using oils or butter, and just use Pam spray and grilled it, you're going to save hundreds of calories there. If you used a lower calorie cheese, you could save yourself 40 to 50 calories there. If you use one slice of cheese versus two, you're gonna save yourself half the calories there. There's so many variables that go into burgers specifically at restaurants that you're gonna be able to manipulate at home to make it so it's a food that you don't even have to avoid at all. I eat burgers twice or three times a week, so trust me, this is not something that you need to completely avoid, but when you're at a restaurant, it is going to be significantly higher calorie than when you're making your own at home. Number two on this list is going to be French fries. So usually comes with the burger. French fries are a food that people have pretty much generally concluded are unhealthy. And the unfortunate thing about French fries being labeled as unhealthy is people think potatoes are unhealthy when in fact potatoes are very healthy. Per 148 grams of potatoes, you got 110 calories, which there's nothing wrong with that. It's not a uh, very high calorie food. It's very satiating. It's You can manipulate the way you cook it to make it even more or less satiating and that's part of the problem at a restaurant with French fries. So. As you guys know, if you've seen my videos in the past, I eat French fries all the time. I make them in the air fryer. They're fantastic. French fries are not satiating. So if you're going for French fries, I recommend pairing them with a more satiating food. Now, why is that bad at a restaurant? Because we're generally coupling French fries with another food. So like, we'll say a burger, for instance. You generally eat the fries first. And when you eat the fries first, because they're not satiating, you blow right through them. And the problem with French fries and calories in terms of restaurants and the way that they cook them there is they're fried in oil. So it adds tons and tons of empty calories. Whereas if you made them at home, you either cut up the potatoes and put them in the oven, or if you use an air fryer like I do, I'd strongly recommend doing it this way, and you season it with salt and pepper, it tastes phenomenal, probably 80% as good, which is definitely worth it. And the calories are significantly less because there's no empty calories from the oil. So this is a really, really big misconception is that potatoes are not good for you because we associate potatoes with French fries and it's the way that the French fries are cooked that makes them not healthy. It's not the potato. 
Number three on this list is bread. And bread is not on this list in the same reason that all the other foods are. It's on this list because of the time that you are served bread at a restaurant. So assuming you didn't eat right before you went to the restaurant, you're generally pretty hungry by the time you get there. And right when you sit down, the first thing that the waiter or waitress asks you is your drinks, and then they bring out a basket of bread. And that's the reason why bread is going to make it onto this list. We are hungry, the first thing we're served is bread, so we eat way more than we normally would if we were at home. Another thing is the type of bread is going to be higher calorie than if you got it at home and just got sliced bread or something of the sort. You're not going to sit there at home and just eat sliced bread all day. You're going to eat something else because you have another option, but when you're at a restaurant, it's the first thing that comes to you and you're hungry. You don't have any other options. Not to mention the ingredients that the bread is served with being butter or oil, both are empty calories, very high in fat, and we're just coupling that with the bread. So that is the reason why bread is making it on my top five foods to avoid at restaurants, but not when you're at home. Bread is not unhealthy. What it's served with can be unhealthy. It's definitely high in calorie and you are getting it served to you when you're very, very hungry, so you're vulnerable to eating a lot of it. Number four on this list is going to be a variety of dishes, and that is going to be a chicken pasta combo dish. So something along the lines of chicken marsala or chicken parm, anywhere where you have chicken and pasta into one dish, that's gonna be number four. The reason for this being on the list is not because of the pasta, and it's actually not because the chicken is oftentimes breaded. If you were to make it at home, I would recommend swapping the portions for each of the ingredients. So what I mean by that is when you get a chicken parm at a restaurant, there is likely a ton of pasta and then a good amount of chicken. It's not necessarily that there's a small amount, but think about it. When you're at a restaurant, the chicken parm is usually really thin chicken, that's been beaten thin and then breaded and then thrown over pasta and with sauce. All of those things can be manipulated when you're at home. You have more chicken in terms of volume. So maybe you have five ounces and it's this big instead of two ounces that's this big. It doesn't matter how big it is as long as it fills your stomach in the long run. If you look at the menus on the Cheesecake Factory, for example, some of the highest calorie meals are their chicken pasta combos. And I understand the reason why there's more pasta than chicken in these meals, because obviously it's cheaper. Go to your grocery store, look at how much it costs to buy a box of pasta, then look at how much a pack of chicken costs. I mean, it's, it's not very difficult to see why they do it this way. But that leaves the calories very easily manipulatable. The, the calories are easy to manipulate when you're at home and you're making it yourself, is what I'm trying to say. You can add more chicken, less pasta. You don't have to cook it in crazy high calorie sauce. You don't cook it in oil. Don't fry the chicken. The calories can drop by literally half. It is very, very, very worth it to make this meal, say chicken parm, at home versus getting it at a restaurant, especially if you're conserving calories. You could literally cut the calories in half. And number five on this list is going to be anything that is fried or breaded. And the reason for this, like I mentioned earlier with the fries and with the chicken parm, if you use an air fryer or bake it, you are saving yourself tons and tons and tons of calories from the way that they're prepared at restaurants, frying them in oil. So the way that these things are prepared at restaurants is you have your chicken, you got your wet hand, the dry hand, you do the Put the chicken in flour, then you put it in egg, then you put it in breadcrumbs, then you fry it in oil. There's so many ingredients. There's the eggs, there's the flour, there's the breadcrumbs, there's the oil. All of these things are adding empty calories to ultimately where you are getting your satiation and your calories from is the chicken. You don't want to be getting that many extra calories. When you're making it at home, I've made popcorn chicken before. I put honey and then I crush up corn flakes and then you put it in the oven and you bake it and it tastes absolutely phenomenal. And I understand that it's corn flakes versus breadcrumbs. You like your breadcrumbs. I challenge you to look at your breadcrumbs in the cabinet. The calories are not that high. The breadcrumbs are not the problem. A big issue is going to come from the oil that it's cooked in and oftentimes what it's paired with. So fried chicken will say, is gonna be paired with perhaps on a sandwich or 
over pasta like in a chicken parm or it might be in a wrap. These things that are all adding calories. You're not going to a restaurant and just getting breaded chicken on a plate. Nobody's doing that. And if you think you're doing that, I wanna know what restaurant you're going to. Leave it in the comments below. So that's gonna be it for today's video. I really appreciate you guys checking it out. If you liked it or learned anything from value, please leave a like below. I make videos every Sunday, so if you're into fitness and health, please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.